Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today is from Toulouse, France, and has been working in the in agricultural robotics since 2014. Um, since 2016, she is co-director of an organization called FIRA. Um, by supporting the development of autonomous machines, she believes that robotics are an important key to the future of agriculture. FIRA is now coming to the U.S. this fall to host the only three-day event for autonomous farming and agricultural robotics. It's being held in Fresno, California. So I would like to welcome Gwen Legrand. Welcome, Gwen, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Chrissy. So first, let's talk about your background. What sparked your interest in robotics and agriculture? Well, first, when I started to work with this industry, I was very interested in understanding how we could revolutionize actually this industry and uh, this like that said, the most important thing is to feed people mm -hmm. and how we could help, uh, well, let's say farmers, but at the end, the whole industry to feed people that the growing population we are facing in a sustainable way, like enough food with good quality food for, let's say, hopefully everyone, but at least most people we can. So how to help that? Right. Yeah. And so what's the history of FIRA? Oh, well, the history of FIRA. So the FIRA, the first idea of FIRA was uh, born in 2015 from the French manufacturer Nayo Technologies. Uh, they are pioneer in uh, outdoor robotics for farming. And they thought because they were like, let's say, one of the first ones to launch a, a robot uh, in the fields, they thought that there was a lack in the event, uh, in the event industry about um, robotics for farms, because we know that there are like in the trade trade fairs for machinery, trade fairs for innovation in uh, in agriculture, but the, the specific needs and the specific challenges uh, that needs to be tackled by the robotics industry had no proper events. So they thought, and I supported them on that, that the industry needed a dedicated event to gather all the key players of the industry. So from the beginning and since now, actually, it's not like a trade show, like for machinery and to go on the market directly, etc. It's really to support and to better understand the needs of farmers, the need of dealers, the need of everyone, actually, to develop all together and to co-build at the end. Uh, autonomous machines that fits uh, the needs of the farmers. That's great. So can you tell me about this event that's happening in October in Fresno? Yes, sure. So from 2016, we've launched uh, World Fira in Europe, in France, but actually it has always been a global event, uh, an international event, because we wanted everyone from all the places in the world to meet and to face the different needs. However, at one point, and especially in 2020, we all know about the pandemic. And at that time, we started to become even more international. And at the same time, the market and the, um, let's say the market and the, the robots were mature enough to open to a proper event dedicated to uh, a proper market. So, um, you know, we thought that the US and maybe especially California, but I would say the whole North America at the end was quite mature enough because of different things, actually, because innovation is more welcome uh, in the U.S. than it is, for example, in European farms. Um, mm -hmm. And also because your fields and all the other kind of crops and all the fields are very big compared to Europe, for example. And they can more welcome uh, this kind of new machines. And so at that point, and because of labor shortage also, of course, and climate change, we thought that going in the US and arriving and explaining and showing what exists in terms of autonomous machines, in terms of robots that are already marketed for the growers was very interesting. So there will be robots from parts of North America, let's say from Canada, and also European robots will also uh, show up. Uh, we're also expecting some orders from New Zealand, Australia, from Asia. 
really to, to, to bring all those solutions directly to, to the US markets. So that's what it is, but actually it's going to last three days. First day will be dedicated to uh, the R&D day. So more about like, you know, the research and development, the, the, the universities, researches and the technology transfer. Uh, the second day on the 19th of October will be dedicated to this exhibition zone and all the networking we can do. And finally, on the 20th, it will be uh, in the fields because we will bring people in the fields in Fresno to show the demos of those uh, That's robots. That's incredible. I am really looking forward to that. Yeah. And you and a colleague went to Fresno, was it last month? It was there, yeah, exactly. It was like yeah. a little bit more than yeah, a month ago. Right. And was that your first time to the American breadbasket there? Well, almost. Uh, I came like 15 years ago in San Francisco. Oh, wow. So, well, mm-hmm. for business trip too. But uh, anyways, it was the first time in, uh, in Central Valley. And that was very, very interesting. Very, yeah, we, we learned a lot. We met very, very passionate people. We met the excitement of uh, growers also to welcome this kind of machine. So it was very incredible, actually. Yeah. And my favorite part about going to Fresno is the, the last half hour of the plane ride, right? And you're looking at the window and you can just see the perfect fields. And it's just so beautiful. Were you, was, it, was it a clear day? Could you see that? Exactly. It was beautiful, actually. You can see exactly these very nice fields. And on the background, those hills, you know, I don't know how you call them, but they are very nice hills all around the, the areas. Yeah, beautiful. it's a beautiful area. So are you focusing on robotics industry wide or are you more focused on a certain segment of the industry? Mm, I would say that robotics is a part of it, but we are more talking about autonomous systems more largely, right, okay. you know, because sometimes farmers don't need like autonomous machine, but they mm-hmm. need to have some tasks made autonomously. So. Right. Yeah. So then it's not just dairy focused or just crop. It's, it's across the board then. Exactly. You're right. It's mm-hmm. all kind of crops, uh, all kind of, uh, yeah. Well, and also dairy, also livestock. Right. Okay. And um, also, will there be something for large farms and small farms, or is this more for large farms? Well, at the beginning, we started to build the event for large, small, large farms because there are more large farms than smaller ones. Mm-hmm. However, and that's a very good question because we talked yesterday with the co-organizers, uh, Western Growers and the University of California, and we thought that small farms deserve to have also um, the solutions for them and solutions exist. So we are thinking about doing maybe and probably we do some demos also for small farms. Oh, that's great. And then you talked about the R&D day. Do you know any of the topics now or there, what is going to be discussed? Well, they are online. Um, mm-hmm. I, can, uh, I can give you the website because everything is online sure, and yeah. we will have some kind of, you know, keynotes and very, very key speakers to highlight R&D. And also those lightning talks coming from actually the call for abstracts that we've just launched today, actually, uh, the call for abstracts for researchers to give their app to send their abstract and to probably present eventually present their their papers during this uh, this wow. R and D day on the first day. Yeah, great. And then for the in field demo day, uh, what's the format? Are are people getting on a bus and traveling? Uh, is it the local farms around Fresno? Yes, exactly. Actually, this is a Fresno State Farm Mm -hmm. who is welcoming the demos on their site. So it's a campus farm and they are managing the crops and all the logistics to welcome uh, the the, the robots on the best uh, condition they can. And so, yeah, you're right. Actually, buses will come from the convention center to the field. So like 10, 15 minutes drive and uh, bring people, the, the participants to the, to the fields. And we will like walk or drive around the different fields around that area. Wonderful. And are there still openings for exhibitors to participate? Yes, yeah, sure. Everything is still open. Uh, there are already 
many many exhibitors that can be seen on the on the website mm -hmm. and many robot manufacturers also with the technology suppliers because that's a very important also input for the industry to see that technology is developing to support uh, these uh, new machines in the fields and uh, you're right actually the the exhibition zone is still open to to to, to exhibitors okay all right, that's good. And and who is the ideal farmer attending this event? The farmer that says, I have to be here. Hmm, the ideal farmer, I would say a farmer who, who has a big issue that he can think that autonomous machine can resolve. Uh, it doesn't need to be convinced. Mm -hmm. And I think that's even better if he's not convinced yet. Um, if he has labor shortage, if he thinks that he can uh, grow in, uh, like he can, uh, he can produce in a more sustainable way thanks to these robots, I think he can discover many interesting solutions that are existing today, and that maybe he can also give his feedbacks to the robot manufacturers to help them improve and to help them develop the right machine for them. Great. And, and I saw on your website, you have Fear Connect. Is that a virtual event? Yeah, exactly. Actually, that's a virtual platform on which okay. all the community of Fiora can meet because oh. that's the kind of social network. People can go there, meet, discover some, let's say, job offers, the robots. They can also watch the replays of the last edition of Fiora's. So it's like yeah, a very community, let's say, a platform online that's open uh, all year long and that uh, you can log in for free. Great. Yeah, we'll include links to that as well in the show notes. And I've seen uh, incredible advances in technology lately, especially. What is the most revolutionary new product that you've seen so far? Hmm. The most revolutionary machine. Actually, each of them is quite incredible. Um, mm -hmm. I would say when you think that a machine can recognize uh, a crop mm -hmm. from a weed, for example, that's something that you think it's incredible because when you think about, let's say, a lettuce on a very early stage, it looks like some weeds sometimes, you know, and that you think that a machine, so that's... Uh, about deep learning and so other innovation, but they can recognize that you are like, that's incredible. And that's the same kind of innovation that's, uh, you know, recognizing a, a mature strawberry from a green one, I mean, so mm -hmm. for picking strawberries, I mean, those kind of machines that are coming on, uh, on the market and that can pick the right, uh, the right uh, fruit at the right time at the same time without uh, damaging it. So that's just incredible actually. And I think, and sometimes that's the problem that we face that people might think that it would replace human, you know? And uh, there are two things like, unfortunately human sometimes cannot work uh, on this condition, very, very hard condition during which the machine, the autonomous machine can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's the first thing I would say. And also that's interesting to think that human can also get a higher level of, um, of knowledge and of activity in their job than being like, you know, uh, picking the strawberries, for example, in the fields that's very hard mm -hmm but it can be coordinating the robots also, and it can do other more interesting things uh, for, for the producer at the end. Right, those are really good points for sure. Mm -hmm. And producers are, they're constantly aiming for more efficient operations. Why is that so important for their bottom line and in turn their future success? Yeah, well, I guess that's the most important for any any industry at the end when um, we talk about business. And actually, that's maybe one of the strongest problem now to really understand how they can have a return on investment when they get a, a new a new robot because robots 
have a price and they don't know yet if it can be efficient or not for their for their mm-hmm. business. However, and that's very interesting also because during our um, second day on the business day, the 19th of October, they will have this panel discussion dedicated to economics and business models of the robots. Are we talking about acquiring a robot or are we talking about having it as a service? You know, it's mm-hmm. very it's very different and uh, so that's everything is under you know construction right now for that and and how important is it to address the need for more efficient food production as a whole to meet the growing world population hmm that's the whole point, I think. And I was, you know, again, I was reading an article about John Deere autonomous tractor and this autonomous system. They are, they are building, they are all aiming to feed the population. And I think that's maybe the, the greatest challenge. And that's why I'm so involved in this, uh, in this industry, because what's most important than, you know, supporting this food industry uh, and that's the first level. I mean, producers are on the first level, but then all the value chain has to be has to be complementary and go on the same on the same way for that. So, where can people find you uh, to register for both producers and exhibitors? Well, they can go on the website. It's mm-hmm. uh, pira actechcom and on this website, you will find, well, you will have two entrances, actually. There is this platform, Fira Connect, but there is also the Fira USA. They mm-hmm. can go there to register. There are different uh, fees depending on the typology. So it's okay. like we have special prices for growers, for example, so for three days. Uh, so they can go there and they can also follow us on the, on the socials. Perfect. And I have one last question for you. What are you most passionate about? So why do you serve this industry? I think we've mentioned it several times. It's really about helping to feed the population on a sustainable way. And I believe robotics is part of the solution. And I'm also sure that it's not the only one. Uh, there are many other solutions, and it's not only about uh, how to 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 produce food. It's only it's also sorry about how not to waste food mm-hmm. because that's also a very interesting subject. And maybe one day we will talk again, and I will be part of an industry about uh, you know avoiding waste of food. But mm-hmm. um, well, for now on, I think we are entering a new era for farm machinery and uh, this new era is uh, like we are just right living right now this new era which is uh, which is uh, autonomous solutions and uh, and robotics for farms right that's great well thank you so much for joining me today i am really looking forward to going to the show and seeing everything and especially the demos And um, thank you to everyone who's watching or listening. If you want to learn more, all of the links are provided in the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe to North American uh, Egg Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram, or Egg Fuse channels. And the podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And have a great day. Thank you, Lucy.